Hey, how's it going? I'm good. How are you doing? Doing all right, doing all right. So uh, we have been talking back and forth over the phone, trying to figure out uh, w what we can do about this. You have always been on the forefront of reporting on this bullying, which seems to, you'd think that it would be going away. Why do you think uh, this is still going on? And, and uh, thank you for reporting on it as much as you do, Anderson. Well, I mean, there's certainly, look, a, a lot of intolerance in the world, as we all know, and, and that trickles down I into schools. Um, kids see that, they hear it around them. And look, high school is difficult for everybody. It's a difficult time. People are trying to fit in. It's easy to make fun of, of other people. But I, I do think there's something happening in our culture of a, sort of a lack of empathy that's grown. I think a lot of that has to do with, you know, we're living online now, and it's very easy to be cruel to people online. And we've seen a huge uptick in cyberbullying. And I think a lot of parents don't really focus on that. They focus on, you know, maybe what's happening in the schools, but, you know, and they think maybe it's not so bad for their kids because, you know, they went through it when they were kids. But it's much different than, than, than it used to be for, for us, uh, you know, who grew up in a pre computer generation. Now, kids, there is no escape for it. I mean, it's not just happening in school or on the way to class. It's happening when your kids are in their bedroom, when they're on their way home from school on their mobile devices, uh, on their, on their web, web pages that they're, they're visiting, on websites, online. Uh, so kids can't escape from it. And I think it's, I, I think it's taking a toll. And, and just the case recently of Tyler Clemente, you know, this 18-year-old this student at Rutgers University, um, a promising uh, violinist, uh, he, you know, he wasn't necessarily bullied to his face by his roommate, but his roommate had this webcam and secretly turned it on when Tyler had a date with a guy in his room, um, and he broadcast it live on, on the internet. He streamed it out live, unbeknownst to Tyler, and Tyler ended up uh, killing himself uh, just uh, just the other day. And and this is and they're being charged for invasion of privacy. Is that right? The guy that that did this. There's a, a roommate and a, a friend of his whose computer was actually used uh, who, who are facing charges. Uh, they may actually face some sort of bias charges, although right now they haven't been charged in that. They've been charged in, in uh, misdemeanors. Yeah, I think, uh, well, that, I mean, there, there were so many in such a short period of time, but then Tyler's story, for, for me personally, it, it just broke my heart because the, clearly these people had to know what they were doing by streaming something that intimate, no matter who you are, you don't want that out there, and they had to know that this was going to hurt, hurt him in some way. It has to be looked at as some type of hate crime, I would think. Yeah, I mean, one, one of the friends of the, the young man who's accused of doing this, of Tyler's roommate, uh, said in, de, in his defense, well, look, if it had been a girl, he would have done the same thing. I, I find that just impossible to believe. I mean, the whole, the whole point of this was that his roommate th thought he had caught him in something and wanted people to see something that his roommate... I don't know if he approved of it or not, but he thought it was titillating enough that, um, you know, that he should stream it online. So I think it's a little disingenuous for, for anyone to say that, you know, if this had been a girl, it would have been the same situation. Right. Were you bullied at all, Anderson, growing up? I, I, you know, I've been thinking a lot, of, trying to remember this a lot, and, and I, I don't think I was. We, I went to a very small school. Um, I only had about 100 people in my graduating class, but I think I was more of a bystander. You know, we always talk about the bullies and we talk about victims, but the vast majority of kids are kind of bystanders. They witness it, and I think I, I witnessed a lot of not physical bullying, but, you know, name-calling and making fun of people for perceived differences. Um, and, and I remember there was a kid who stuttered in my class, and I, and I had a slight stutter, and I still kind of have a, a slight stutter sometimes. Um, and I remember kids making fun of him, and I kind of just stood by. I didn't intervene because I was kind of relieved that they weren't picking on me. And I think when we talk about, you know, solutions, we have to think about bystanders as well and how to get them involved um, in, in solving this problem as well. I, I honestly think that there should be a course just like math, just like history, just like English. There should be a, a class of compassion for kids at a young age starting to learn about compassion and, and kindness and understanding um, that we're all different and, and accepting our differences. And I think that would be a great curriculum that, that kids learn in school if they don't get it anywhere else. I do want to say uh, that, that we're not here to make it a gay or straight issue, because bullying is bullying, and a lot of that it, that's going on no matter... And even if pe they're perceived to be gay and not gay or whatever, but the words that are acceptable now in schools and in, in movies, on t TV, you see uh, the word uh, that's so gay or, or faggot being, you know, just... It, they're commonly used when a kid is bullied. And... If you use the N-word, you're in trouble, and, and it's not acceptable, and yet these words are thrown around. It, don't you find that that is a, a big yeah. problem? 
It's incredible when, when you realize how, how commonly the, the, the F word is used um, or the term that's so gay among kids today. I mean, you, see, you hear it from coaches, you hear it uh, on the playing fields, you hear it in the hallways of schools. And, and it's used not just against kids who, who are actually gay or lesbian, um, it, it's used against anybody who's perceived that way or even just as, a, as an insult uh, to anybody uh, in, in this day and age among kids. And, I, I, that's something that just got to stop. As you said, look, if, if a kid in the classroom uses the N-word, a teacher will, will discipline that child or bring that child to the principal's office or talk to the child at least. I've talked to so many kids who will say a, te you know, a teacher will hear the F-word being thrown around in his or her classroom and do nothing about it. That's got to stop. You know, we've got to change the way people use these words because these words do have power and they're used uh, like weapons. And I was, I was sitting in a, preview, in a movie the theater over the weekend and there was a preview of a movie and in it, the actor said, that's so gay. And I was shocked that not only did they put that in a movie, but that they put that in the preview. They thought that was okay to put in the preview to the movie to get people to go and see it. And, and I just find those words, those terms, um, we got we to gotta do something to, to, to change, to make those words unacceptable, because those words are hurting kids. And, and, you know, someone else I talked to recently said, you know, that... that the words people use and, and the things people say about other, other kids online, it enters into their internal dialogue. And when you're a kid, you know, it does, it can change the way you see yourself and the way you think about yourself and, and the worth that you, that you give to yourself. Um, and, and I think we need to, you know, really focus on what language we're using and, and how we're treating these kids. I agree. I agree.